Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be talking about a topic which a lot of you guys asked me to make a video about, which is basically form validation and input validation using React.js. And I'm going to be using a library which I honestly don't think there's, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I only know this library. I've always used this library for input validation. So I believe it is the most famous one. If you search in tutorials online, most of them will show you uh, basically teaching using this library. So this is the library I'm going to be using. And its name is Yup. It's very famous. And we're going to be using it in this tutorial. So basically, you can see right here, I have a, a normal application in React. It, I just loaded up. As you can see right here, it has everything. And the only thing I did was I created this small kind of form, right? It's a small application, which there's just a form with uh, three inputs and a button. And why did I choose uh, basically the inputs? One of them is for putting the name, one of them is for putting the, the email, and the other one is for putting a password. So why did I choose these three inputs, these three like pieces of information that I want the user to get? Well, because those will teach you guys all the different stuff that you can do to validate your inputs using Yup. And I'll show you guys, for example, how to make sure that the the person submitting the form wrote a, a valid email, like they didn't just enter a bunch of random letters. I can also show you guys uh, like how to validate if the user actually put the, a password that matches, for example, uh, either just uh, like if, if, they, if, if we want the password to be between five to 10, 10 letters, then we can definitely make this work. We can validate to see if that is the case. We can also validate for much other stuff, for example, using Regex, but I'm not gonna show that in this video, but this is basically what we're gonna be doing. So you can see right here, we have our simple project and we need to install Yup into our application. I have already installed it, but if you, but, but if you haven't, uh, which I guess you, you didn't, then you have to come here to your terminal and you have to ju just write yarn add Yup, just like this, Yup. And, or if you're using NPM, you can write NPM install um, yup, and that will work. And when you finish installing it, then it is all said and done. So basically you can see right here, we have a very, very simple application. And what I want to do and what I usually do is I create a folder called validations into my project. So I'm gonna come over here and create a folder called validations. And I guess many people also do this because it has the material UI uh, theme, uh, color for, for validation. So I guess it's kind of like a, a standard for making uh, applications. And inside of here, I put all the different files that require some validation. For example, if we want to validate a form for creating a user in our application, then I'm going to create a file called user validation, or I can just, I'll just call it user validation like this, .js. And if I want to create a, another validation file, it's just for organization purposes. So I'll create a different one for each kind of form I have in my application. So we're going to be using this one right here. And in order to use Yup, we need to import Yup into our application. So let's just say import uh, all, uh, all as Yup. So we got to import everything inside of the Yup library from Yup. So basically, we're gonna. Why do we do this? Well, because we need to import everything existent in the Yup library, and we want to import that as a to, to represent it as the variable Yup. So now that we imported this, we can basically just come over here and we can start defining our schema. So what do I mean by schema? Well, the result of this form. So when this form is submitted, we expect it to be basically almost like an object, right? So there's the name property with the name value. So it's whatever we wrote over here. There's the email with the email value. And there's the password with the password value that we put. So in order to do that, we got to like to validate that we got to create a schema that represents the same thing. So in order to create a schema, we can come over here and say something like um, const uh, some user schema, I'll call it user schema and equally to yup dot object because it is an object. And then we can just put dot shape. And what this does is now inside of here, we can basically define our object that will represent our form. So just like I mentioned before, our object for the form will contain a property called name, for example. And I'll just write all the properties first. So name, there's gonna be an email property. And there's also going to be a password property, as you can see right here. So what do we actually put inside of here? Well, we actually put the type definition for our property. For example, name, we want to, we want it to be just a simple string. And we want to make sure that we receive that string. So how do we validate that? Well, with Yup, 
there's a property called string. And this will basically make sure that whatever we put in name is a string. Then we can also just put that we want it to be required so that we, we will never submit a form without uh, having like with having an empty string for the name. So this is all the validations we actually need for name because we don't care like a person can put a, a 20 character name that we don't we don't care that much. It doesn't have to be have any more validation than just this. However, with email, it is important that we check to see if it is actually similar to an email, right? If we have the at symbol, if we had the dot com or dot whatever, we got to see if it is an email. So how do we do that? Well, yup already takes care of for, for you. Basically, you can just come here and say yup dot string, meaning we are first uh, making sure it's a string, then we can make sure it's an email by just passing the email property. And then finally, we can just say we want to make sure it is required. So this is how you basically validate an email. And for password, which in my opinion, is the most interesting one, you can just come here and say, as we did before, yup dot string, we, we make sure it's a string, then we want to basically make sure that whatever we put inside of here is between a certain amount of characters, right? We don't want someone to put a password that is too small or a password that is too big. So let's imagine we want to make it so that you can't put a password below four characters and you can't put a password above like 10 characters. Yeah, so let's just do it this way. So in order to do make it so that it has to be at least four characters, you can just pass the min character, the min property. So we're going to say min four. And now it's making sure that it is at least four characters. And if you want to pass max, we can just say, say dot max and pass 10 characters here. And it will do the same thing. And as always, we got to pass to say we want it to be required, required at the end. So required. And now we have all the validations we actually need for our schema. Now you might be wondering, well, is that it? Well, basically, it is it's almost it because we can now we already have the definition. This is all the validations we're doing in our form. And if we want to access this in another in another component, like over here, we can just export this validation over here. So export const and now we can access this schema wherever we want to. So let's import this schema in our application. So what is the name of that? It's a user schema. So we import user schema from and we can put the path towards the user validation file. So dot slash validations slash user validation. And you can see that like it's already grabbing stuff. It knows we, we can we, we need a user schema from this. And also we also need to import yup in this component. Why do we need to do that? Well, because we are going to use another function from yup, we can actually just import that function specifically, but let like it doesn't really matter. But we're just going to import yup over here in this component because when we submit the form, we want to execute a function from yup, which checks against the validation schema that we created to see if our form data is compliant to that. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's do it right here. Let's actually make it so that when we submit this form, when we click on the submit button, we get an object that represents the values for each input. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just going to do it the, the, the simple way, which is I'm going to create a function here. And let's create this function, for example, create user. And over here, we can just inside of here, we're just going to first of all, take an event, because it's going to be the submit of a form and on our, our form, we can just say on submit and pass create user. So when we click on this button over here, we're going to submit the form and it's going to go everything into this function. As always, we got a event dot prevent default because uh, we don't want stuff to be refreshing when we click on this on this uh, to submit this form. So we don't want the page to refresh. And after we do this, we can basically create an object, which is going to represent the form data. So what what does that mean? Well, let's create a, a an object called form data, which it's going to be a simple object containing name, containing email, and containing password. And how do we get this information? Well, this information is contained inside of the event, um, inside of this event variable, because this event variable represents whatever like the whole form. So what we can do is, for example, if we want to access the the form, the 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 first the value for the first input in the form, we can just say event dot target and targets is basically an array containing all the different inputs in your form. We have three 
So that means that if we want to grab the value written, so whatever is written inside of this first input, we can just grab the first element in the array and say dot value. And this will return the value for the first input. We could do the same thing for all the other ones. And basically what this does is you'll see right now, I'll just change this to one into two. I'll just console log this so you guys can see. Let me console log console.log form data. Let's take a look and see if this works, right? So let me open up my inspect element here. Let's look at our console. And I'll just refresh everything. I'll click over here, write something like Pedro, uh, whatever. Right now, there's no validation. So it doesn't really matter. But I'll just write everything. And you'll see that when I click on submit, an object is console logged containing email name and password, meaning that we're actually correctly retrieving the data from our form and creating an object for called form data. So why is that important? Because now we can just check if this object satisfies the validation schema that we defined on our validations file. So how do we do this? Well, the function that I mentioned that is uh, from yup that checks for validation is very simple. Well, let's create a variable here called is valid. It's just a variable representing a true or false statement. It's a Boolean representing if our form data is valid or not. I'm going to set it equal to a wait because we need to wait for the validation to be done. And to do that, we need to make this async. So what we want to wait is basically we're going to wait for the user schema dot is valid. So we're going to ask is valid and we're going to pass the um, the form data. So form data. Actually, I don't even think we need to import you up. Let me try not importing you up. Yeah, we don't even need to do that because we're already importing the users, the user schema. Yeah, that, that, forget what I mentioned about you But basically, now we have a variable called is valid, which represents the comparison between the user schema that we defined over here, and the form data object that we get from our form. And what does that mean? Well, we can now just check to see if we actually validated our inputs. So let's check and console log the, the value for is valid. You can see right here, this shouldn't be valid for many reasons. Like, for example, if I if I remove this um, at symbol, this shouldn't be valid at all, because uh, it's not an email over here. And I think maybe I didn't count the letters here, but it's probably not between the letters. So let me click on submit. And you'll see it will say false. Why is it false? Because it doesn't satisfy the schema we defined. But if I come here and I say something like, I want my email to be Machado at gmail.com. And I want my password to be password. Um, that's how many letters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's okay. Eight password, eight letters means it's between. And when I click on submit, you'll see that it will say true. If I make this pa this password huge and I submit, it will say false because it is now larger than the max that we set over here. So this is basically how you do and how you work with uh, validations in React. So how useful is this? It is very useful. It, trust me, you don't want to send wrong data to the back end. Uh, a lot of people ask me like, wait, so I need to check for this kind of stuff both in, both in the back end and in the front end. I would say yes. I never like large scale project I work on, I validate I use you on both the front end and the back end. Why? Because I want to make sure the data I'm receiving is correctly validated. I don't want to be inserting wrong data into my database because that can bring that, that, that can literally bring a lot of problems. So I would recommend after like if you finish this video video, I would recommend uh, learning formic or any type of form uh, validation system. Why? Because, uh, for example, if I write here, if I get this, this isn't valid, then I want to display a simple message over here saying, well, this email type is not valid. And you can do this by using formic, I have a video on formic and yup, using both of them together, I'm going to link that video here, like on the card uh, on the top right here. So if you want to watch that video, you can just watch it. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day and I would really appreciate it. And I see you guys next time.